Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I have to get that close to that one. I have a very short message tonight. Is that okay? Can I get an amen? <laughs> Sister David said, Praise the Lord. Oh. Uh, it's very familiar scriptures. Uh, everyone should be pretty familiar. But uh, it's Psalms 118. And no one knows the actual author of Psalms 118, but uh, I do want to mention that uh, as I was studying about this evening, I, I kind of uh, I heard somebody speaking and they, and they mentioned a scripture from this and it kind of inspired me to go through this, this chapter. But one of the things that, that kind of brought to my mind that I, I couldn't, it, it kind of bewildered me because it talks about the, the Hebrew historians. This, this first verse here was, was a psalm, or in other words, part of a psalm. And the Hebrew historians, according to my study guide, they talk about how Jesus sung this song. Somewhere between the Last Supper and before he went to, let me pronounce it right. <laughs> oh, Gethsemane. And I literally, I was like, I could not, you know, can you actually imagine? See, I've never, I've never thought about this before, Brother Jay. Right. I have never thought about Jesus saying. Why, have it, how, why has that not ever come to me that Jesus would sing? And it impressed me. I'm going to read this first verse when you can be seated. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endures forever. You can be seated. It amazed me that Jesus sang a song. He was singing from Psalms. And we never really think about that. We, I, I, it's never really crossed my mind. You know, it's weird how you, you study and you read and you see all these different scriptures about things and such and everything. But I never, it never really dawned on me. You know, we, we talk about Paul and Silas, you know, singing, you know, in the, in the prison and, and all those things. But it never occurred to me, Jesus singing. What in the world would that have sounded like? Think about what I'm saying, church. God singing. The perfect specimen of a man. Don't forget that. He wasn't a frail little creature. He was a perfect specimen of a man. That means his voice, his singing would have been perfection. And I've never really thought about that. It, it never really occurred to me like that. And then I got to read on into uh, Psalms 118. There's so many things in here. Of course, now, a, a lot of these verses is referring to Israel. But you see, when they're referring to Israel, we can look at ourselves as referring to us as well. Because when you go into that second verse where it says, Let Israel now say that its mercy endures forever. Remember, Israel time and time again let God down. They, 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 many times they paid a price for letting God down, for failing God. Right. Have we ever paid a price for failing God? Yes, we have. I have. I have. Me and Sister Martha is the only one, but we have. I, God's told me, Sister Liz, God's told me to do things before. I didn't do them. I regretted not doing them. And it's not necessarily that it was something physically painful. It was something I regretted not doing. I wish I just went in and done when God told me to. Can you actually think about God standing there? Jesus standing there singing. And I'm going to tell you something. If that couldn't bring tears to you, I, that's nothing good. If you really think about it. That third verse where it says, Let the house of Aaron now say 
that his mercy endures forever. It's talking about the, the priesthood and talking about the ministry, how it let God down time and time again, how it failed to put, put it forth, how it failed God so many times, but yet his mercy endures for how long? A few days? Forever. It endures forever. That fourth verse says, Let them now who fear the Lord say that his mercy endures forever. At, at, raise your hand if you fear, fear the Lord. Amen. You better fear the Lord in, in reverence right. and praise. Right. Because if you don't, it's going to be a sad day. It's going to be a sad day. Uh, that's what the problem is in the world now. Nobody has reverence for God. Everybody wants to put God down. You see, they're not worried about somebody shooting them. They're not worried about somebody storming in and cutting their head off if they put Jesus down. But oh, they won't touch Allah, will they? Or Muhammad. Mm -mm. No, you can't do that. Because you'll get in trouble if you do that. You're, you're inciting something if you do that. But oh, it's okay to do this to Jesus. No, it's not. Now, I'm not saying rise up, y'all. Don't go for sharpening your butcher knives. <laughs> load your guns. Well, your gun needs to be loaded in. It ain't worth a flip. They loaded. But what I'm saying is, is that if you will think about it in this aspect, yes, I've let Jesus down. But his mercy endures forever. No matter how I mess up or what I do, as long as I come back to him, his mercy endures forever. You know, Let's go to that fifth verse. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. How many people has been so down and out and you just call them the Lord? Lord, I need help. Yeah. Lord, I'm in the, I, we don't use the word distress, but we use the word, Lord, you know I need you right now. You know I need you to do something in this situation. You know I need you right now. Right. That's right. Preach it, sister. You know, this, and, and, now, and, and don't let you, I, I don't want you to forget too. Now, a lot of these scriptures is referring, like I say, to Israel, the oncoming tribulation, because it's talking about what's to come for Israel. Because you see, they go into the tribulation. And now, let's think about this for a second. Wait a minute, when was this written? So, this is really a prophetic word. Of things to come. Of things to come. You can read that sixth verse. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? If you have God, the only thing man can do is destroy the flesh. He can take away, they can take away your belongings. They can take your life. But you see, if you have Jesus... Your life is ever after. It's just like what was it, Brother Charles? You talk about. Uh, he said that they, uh, 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 for me to die is gain. Right. For the real child of God, then we think about well, we're leaving loved ones behind. We're leaving this and that. <clears throat> yes, but always remember, as long as you stick with God, you're going to see Him. You know, we worry and we distress at the same. We worry about these things that are going around. Look, I, I talked about it a little bit Sunday. I, I saw somebody at the bottom, right in front of me, at the bottom. And I have to step back and look at myself and think about how blessed I am. That's not me. I mean, I saw a young man that went into the bathroom and sat down and stuck a needle in his arm. And he pushed that in his arm and fell completely out face first on the concrete floor. Looked like he was dead. Matter of fact, I, I, was, I, I just knew he was going to die. I just knew. I was going to be out there watching for the ambulance to pull up and he was going to be dead. You know, you get out there, you know, Lord, you know, we don't, you know, we don't need this happen, you know, this and that. 
But then the next thing you know, here comes his brother-in-law across the parking lot and getting in his car, coming in there. He said, hey, he's up and around now. I'm going to carry him so and so. He was laying there, couldn't, couldn't say anything. He was laying there face first. He jerked a little bit. And I was thinking, how, because it's never been in my face like, you know, we see it on TV, we hear about it, we hear about things like this happening, but when you actually are there and you see it and you know the person, it brings a sense of reality to you that you don't normally have. You know, it's just like, you know, a, a death in the family or something like that, you know, you can, you can console somebody that's lost somebody, but to you actually lost yourself, you don't understand it. I saw that and it brought me a sense of reality of, of you know, maybe it ain't so bad just to be fat and healthy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, let me go to that. Which one did I get to, Brother Ben? See, let me go to seven. And the Lord take my part with them who help me. Therefore shall I see my distress upon them who hate me. My desire, not my distress. In which he's talking about my desire upon them. In other words, he'd like to see, basically, kind of in a roundabout way, I'd like to see vengeance on these people that are doing me wrong. I'd like to see God get a hold of them. I want to see God do something. These people, has any of y'all ever said, God, I really wish you'd do something about these folks? <laughs> I have. Amen. Can I get a witness, Brother James? <laughs> Lord, I need. I, Lord, I need. I'm gonna have to have another job, or I can't work with these people. Lord, I, I'm gonna have to be in a different city. I'm gonna have to be able to go somewhere else. I can't deal with these people. And so many times, God either changes my perception, or He does change the situation. Right. But He does something. He does. And like Brother Charles mentioned Sunday, and Brother Jody preached the other night. I ain't dead. You know, we think, man, I can't make it. I can't do this. Look, I, I work I work for like six or seven years with somebody that's almost impossible to work with. Most negative day you ever been in your life. Talk about just negativity, just just boiled out of it. If you got off at 11 o'clock, he was mad because you didn't get off at 1030. Mm -hmm. Bro, Jody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and everybody in here probably knows somebody or has known somebody that's like that. But you know what? We just got to back up and say, you know what? I'm not at the bottom. I'm blessed. Right. I appreciate what I have around me. I'm blessed. Yeah. Even though the negative Nelly over here is never satisfied with anything, Brother Carol. I had, had anything you could think of as far as you would think of the American dream. And it got thrown all the way. Because you never, it is so dangerous for us to never be satisfied. When it comes to the spirit, we should never be satisfied. We should never be at a point where we think, well, I don't think really, I, I don't really need to say much more. I mean, I really, I've read it four, five, six times. I, some people say I've read it 50 or 60 times. I, what's the use of me reading it again? The read, the use of you reading it again, because the next time you read it, you're going to find something else out new that you didn't read the first time or the second time or the third time. Just like I was talking about my obsession, I don't know how many times I've read the Bible and I have read front to back, just reading in the mornings, my normal reading, not studying and not flipping through, but my normal reading in the morning, I have read front to back the Bible, I don't know how many times. But it has never occurred to me, Jesus sing. Singing worship and praise. And it's hard for the mind it, 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 for us to comprehend, it's God singing. That's just like this word. Every time we study this word, it is God speaking. Because this is an anointed word of God. It's God right. speaking. Right. It is better, that eighth verse, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. That's right. No matter who you think it is, at some point, they're probably going to let you down at some point. But you know what? What makes two child of God different is, even though they may let you down at this point, you can still get back together at some point. Most of the time. 
But you cannot put your trust in anybody. It has to be in God. It has to be in God. There, there, you don't, there's so many choices to put your faith in the world, put your faith in this, put your faith in that. It all ends up just being dust. Right. Look, when we go in the, if we go in the ground, if we're not here during the rapture, and we go in the ground, we're going back to dirt. And everybody else at some point will just carry on. And you know the only thing anybody remember is what kind of witness you had. You know, we talked about that before, that famous author that says people may not remember what you said to them, but they'll remember how you made them feel. That's, that's true. That's very true. It's very true. Let me go ahead and read some more. It is better to trust in the Lord. Oh, this is so, man, this... <laughs> This is like this was written this morning. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes or the government or your president. We cannot put our faith of each and every day of whether we, how we follow God as to whether or not what God's doing in our government. In other words, we cannot be, if, it does, if the election doesn't go our way, I still have faith in God, Brother Carol. Because trust me, 10 years ago, it didn't go my way. But I still have faith in God. You know what? I've read in the Word, and we talked about it. The Word is God. Many a times, He put wicked rulers in, in place so that someone paid a price. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Let me go ahead and read the 10. All nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They compass me about, yea, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They compass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of the thorns. For in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Ye have thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. Have you ever failed before? Have you ever been down and out and fall down? Amen. But you're still here. God helped me. I have been down and out, and God helped me. Yes. The world didn't help me. Family helps. Family helps. But if that family has the anointing of God, it's that much better. The Lord is my strength and song, and has become my salvation. Is the Lord your song tonight? I hope every single one of y'all tomorrow, if you get to sing the song, I want you to imagine what your imagination of what you thought Jesus looked like. Looking right at you singing the song again. Because I've never really done that. I cannot imagine of hearing a perfect pitch, a perfect song, because anything he sung would be equal to perfect. Rumor, this is the this is the same, this is the same one that was in a world full of sin and sinned not. Was tempted of the devil, raised above everything, tempted of the devil, and even been fasting for 40 days. And, Tempted of the devil, but done right. Remember, we talked about that in the adult class. We talked about it. You know, use the word. Use the word against the devil. But don't forget, he was using his own words. Right. <laughs> he was God. Right. <clears throat> he was using his own words. Oh. That 15, the voice of rejoicing salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. You notice it says the right. Sorry about that, Brother Jacob. But when I think about that, I think I'm referring to the right and the left. 
you say you notice I went right and left. Well, nobody caught it. Maybe you'll get it when you get home. <clears throat> the right hand of the Lord is exalted. <laughs> the right hand of the Lord does value. I shall not die, but live. And declare works of the Lord. You know, I, and, uh, Brother Jody preached about this the other night about, you know, look, you hadn't died. You, you're still here. You know, uh, Brother Brent Ben preaching the other night about, you know, don't mess with my seed. You know, that, that's why we need to be, don't, don't mess with my song. Don't mess with my, how I feel today. Devil behind me in Jesus' name. Don't mess with my attitude today. I'm not saying bring it on. I'm saying just get back. Get out of my way. In Jesus' name. Back off. I want to sing a song of mercy. Sing a song of grace. Sing a song of peace in perfect pitch. Why keep doing this with pitch? I don't know. It seems like a thing to say. The Lord has chastened me sore, but he has not given me over unto death. Right. <laughs> when we kind of we kind of hit on that first part of the chapter. We're talking about it. Have you ever paid a price? Have you ever gotten yourself into something that you knew you shouldn't have got into and you really got burnt doing it? Amen. And you say, God, if you get me out of this this time. God's saying, I didn't get you in. But I'll get you out of it. You get yourself in it. But God will still get you out of it. Now he said, go jump in something. I tell you what, if you want something to go dive into, go dive into the Word. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do you wrong. It's not going to cheat on you. It's not going to talk about you. It's not going to stir up strife about you. It's not going to backbite. It's going to tell you the truth. Right. Every time you read it, it's going to tell you the truth. Right. No mistake, it's always the truth because it's God speaking. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter, <coughs> I will praise you for you have heard me and have become my salvation. You know, there is times when you try to speak to the Lord, you pray to the Lord, and it seems like He just doesn't hear you. Yeah, who is it that somebody all refers to? You know, it seems like prayers just hit the ceiling and stop. Mm -hmm. Well, trust me, that's just a feeling. Because if you're if you're following God, He always hears you. The thing is, you just will get prepared. Because something's about to happen. Brother Charles tells us that all the time. Something's about to happen. You know, we are literally, we talked about some of the adult class this past Sunday. I, I really do not think people understand the urgency of the times we're in right now. Right. And how we are teetering on the end of our nation. We're teetering to the end. I, I don't think it's ever been this bad in history. And the problem is, is the younger kid generation, the younger kids, that say the, say the small all the way to probably close to 30, know nothing about the history. You know, I remember, uh, I remember we used to do those uh, nuclear bomb drills. Those of you young people remember that, do you? We thought Russia was going to blow us up. Didn't we? That's what they told us. Everybody was talking about it. We do those drills, we do those things. See, young people don't remember none of those things. They don't understand. Almost every single courthouse, every single court building in every county almost has a uh, had the uh, bomb shelter in the bottom of it. They're still there. Go to Pontotoc up there. They're back rooms now. When you walk in the door, side door, look to your right, go down the steps, that's the bomb shelter. You see, the devil will put fear in our heart. Trying to scare us to death. 
I'm not trying to put fear in your heart. I'm trying to put urgency in God. I'm trying to put an urgency of how important it is for you to be ready to meet Jesus at any moment. Don't sit back and look for a sign. I say it over and over and over. Don't be waiting on the sign. Jesus warns about that. Matter of fact, he refers to him as, what is it, you hypocrites? Sit back and look for a sign. Wait on a sign. You want a sign? You need a sign? You need to be proved? See, that's not faith. Let me go ahead and read some more. The stone which the builders refused, uh, refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. And this is the scripture. This next scripture is the scripture that kind of inspired me to go with Psalm 118. And, and why I want to go to it? Because this scripture is so important for us to recognize and realize we're not at the bottom. We're not drug out in the back. We're not drug out in the ditch. 24. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Right. We will rejoice. We will be glad. I'm glad because I'm here. I'm glad I didn't have to overcome the don't want to. I don't want to church tonight. I'm tired. I've had a long week. I've had a rough week. <coughs> the devil loves to hear that. He loves that. You're tired. You need to think about yourself sometimes. You know, you don't think about yourself enough. You should just sit here and rest. You need your rest. It's probably going to be a bad day tomorrow. You better prepare for it. How many people's ever heard that? And if you think about it, you were actually just telling yourself that. <laughs> and then we get ourselves all worked up, and nothing happens the next day. And then we're worried to death, well, what's going to happen tomorrow then? If nothing happened today, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. The devil loves that. We need to go back to the 20, if you get to thinking that way, go back to 24th verse. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what, no matter what, how crazy it is around you, no matter who you see, or what's done around you, you see things going on, you, you, you'll get in a panic, you'll get worried, you'll get bit afraid, you'll be concerned, you'll be this, you'll be that, this one calling you, telling you one thing, this one calling you, telling you another thing, now this is going wrong, that's going wrong. Then you just got to back up from all those things and say, well, I'm blessed. Right. I can't let these things change this thing. Right. We're not careful. We'll let that happen. We can't let all these other, everybody else's situations change our own. Right. I want to get to that one verse. Oh. Say now, I beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, send now prosperity. You see, I, I, I do want to mention that it, it, when it's talking about this, it's kind of referring to when Israel goes into the tribulation, they're going to need some prosperity. You see, when they see they go into the tribulation, they're living in it. You will go read Revelation if you're worried about the tribulation. But Israel is going to be looking for some relief. They're going to be looking for prosperity. But you see, us as a child of God, we can sit back and, and, and look for prosperity in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Now that don't mean you're going to have piles of this and piles of that. But what do you need right now? I'm not talking about what do you want. What do you need right now? That's right. <laughs> you see, you're in, really in absolute need of nothing. But God knows the desires of your heart. Blessed be he who comes into the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. What is this? House of the Lord. You see, I get a blessing when I come to the house of the Lord. Right. That's why I come to the house. It's not the only reason why I come, but it's one of the, what, what would you say, one of the uh, uh, 
you know, but, uh, incentives. Well, incentive, but uh, perks. Benefit. It's one of the benefits, one of the perks. You can be feeling, I can be feeling, <laughs> Sister Cindy, I can be feeling down and out. I can be feeling drug out. I can be thinking about work. But when I come through those doors, I forget about that. But you know what? If I don't get about myself, I should be able to do that when I walk in my house. Right. I should be able to do that when I walk out of work and get in my car. I say, God, here I am. God, I'm out of that right now. I'm looking for prosperity. You know, we, and, and I'm going to end. I, I got, I'm going to go ahead and read these other three verses and now I'm going to end. God is the Lord, which has shown us life. Bind the sacrifice of cords even unto the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Right. And that last verse, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Right. Not for till Sunday. Not just till next Wednesday. Forever. Say it, sister, forever. <laughs> now, there you go. There you go. If we could only be that excited all the time. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to end there, but I, I, I want to go back one more time. I, if you remember anything, if you want to put a title of anything to this, tonight is that 24th verse. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Right. Don't be down now. If you start getting down now, flip to a song. Right. If you get down now, read the word of God. But the song, man, you can go to Psalms and you just mm. Mm -hmm. because you know why? His mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There, there wouldn't a one of us be here tonight if it wasn't for the mercy of the Lord. That's right, amen. I'm glad His mercy endures forever. That's right. Praise God. God's so good to His church. Praise God. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. A lot to praise Him for. And and and, and He was talking about the Book of Psalms, and, and, and perhaps that was a, uh, a song that Jesus sung. That's right. And and. and and psalms are actually songs. They, they were written as, as songs. So if you, you don't know, you know, you don't know what to sing, open up, open up the book of Psalms and sing you a song. There you go. Amen. God, it'll lift you. It'll lift you up. It'll make your day. That's right. It'll make you rejoice in that day. Praise God. Let's all stand.